Hey guys, and welcome to my learning object where I'll be describing the difference between displacement and pressure in longitudinal waves, or more specifically, sound waves. So getting right into it, there are two terms that we need to know right off the bat. The first one being compression, which represents a region of high pressure within a longitudinal wave, and a rarefaction, which represents a region of low pressure within a longitudinal wave, uh, keeping in mind that sound waves are longitudinal waves. So moving on, how do these two relate to each other? Well, compression causes particles to bunch together, and this bunching together increases density, which increases pressure, seeing as density and pressure are directly related. Refraction, on the other hand, causes the particles to move apart. Now this moving will decrease the density and therefore decrease the pressure. So take a looking, take in a look at these two mathematically, we see that our displacement is shown as a cosine function, where, on the other hand, our pressure, or change in pressure, is shown as a sine function. Something else to note out is right here we have our amplitudes, and here we have the phases of the two functions. So moving right along, we can see what is the relationship between these two. And that is a relationship of a derivative. We know that the derivative of cos x, our f of x, is negative sine x, our f prime of x. So we have displacement represented as a cosine function and change in pressure represented as a sine function. We can see the two are related. So you may be asking, where does the negative go? Well, in the textbook, we are shown that delta p equals negative b times ds by dx. So our ds by dx is our negative sine, and our negative b multiplies with that to give a positive, seeing as a negative and a negative is a positive. So moving on, we can see that the phases of the two are different. Uh, obviously a cosine starts at its maximum at zero and a sine function starts at its equilibrium point at zero. In order to get these two to behave in the same way, we need to shift the functions by pi over two. Therefore, we can say that both the displacement and the change in pressure is out of phase by pi over two radians. So moving on, we have a graphical representation of the whole thing. This demonstrates quite clearly how they all relate to each other. So if I play it, we have at the top right here, we have our longitudinal wave or sound wave. And below that, we have our displacement. And below that, we have our pressure. Some things to point out and to show is that we can see in the representation of the sound wave right at the very top, we can see regions of denser particles and less dense particles as the wave oscillates. That corresponds to our compressions and rarefactions. Another two things to point out is that we have both nodes in displacement and nodes in pressure. A node, of course, being where the displacement, or not the displacement, but where the function crosses through the equilibrium position. So for our displacement node, which we have right here, this would represent a region where there is no change in displacement. So we can see, interestingly enough, by comparing the two bottom graphs, that at a node in displacement, we have an anti-node in pressure. So this, we can see on the top representation right here, around the first red dot. You can see here that the local density does not change where, or I should say, the local displacement does not change, where the particles in that vicinity do not actually move. But we can see as the wave oscillates, we have both maximums and minimums in the pressure. Another thing to point out is our node in pressure, which we can see taking place at the last dot. We know that the node in pressure and occurs at the antinode in displacement, which I can show right here 
and right here. So we see on the representation at the top that here we have both maximum and minimums in our displacement, but the local density does not change. Therefore, the pressure does not change. So I hope this has been helpful and that I was able to clear some things up if any of you were confused. Moving on, I just have the reference page where I took that information both from our textbook, pages 240 and 241, where I got the information about the equations. And lastly, the graphical representation was taken from this website right here. This is a very good website, and if you guys are confused more, maybe go check it out, and it goes into even further detail. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot.